When I was 29 years old, I was the advertising manager of Vogue magazine. I was really young to manage the New York sales team that was responsible for over half of the revenues of that publishing giant. I worked with hundreds of clients. After that, I took a job with far greater responsibility. I became a mom. And for the better part of two decades, I helped two little girls become confident and independent women. That job was monumental. When that humbling and awe-inspiring journey began to come to a close and our youngest daughter took off for college, I looked out at that long stretch of years ahead of me and I wondered, what's next? I had been a news reporter when I was in college for a local radio station, and I have always wanted to have my own television talk show. While well, modern technology made it possible for me to start a blog and a podcast and a video series, all on the subject of reinventing yourself after 50. One day, one of my guests, another mom with a publishing background, suggested that we start an online business together. Well, she had a great idea. But when I was at Vogue, we were still laying out those thousand-page issues on shelves. And while I'd had other jobs in publishing over the years, none had prepared me to launch a digital company. But in the true fashion of many 50-year-olds today, I said, let's try it. So my partner and I hired many young professionals with the skills that we lacked. Our social media managers, content providers, and software developers are all in their 20s and their 30s, making our company truly intergenerational. My return to the workplace mirrors that of so many people in their 50s who are either restarting careers or pursuing brand new ones. And we're only just beginning to see the growing influence of the 50-plus demographic on the workplace, on the economy, and on younger professionals. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the fastest growing segment in the labor force are people over 50. Medical advancements and wellness trends means that people my age will be living and thriving for years to come. Now, when you're anticipating another 30 active years, you have to keep working. But my peers and I also want to keep working. Every week, it seems, I meet somebody in their 50s who's in the early stages of a brand new career that they are passionate about. Like my friend, who was a successful real estate developer, who opened a yoga studio or a top female executive who left banking to open an intergenerational co-working space, or an attorney who stopped practicing law after 30 years to open a sports bar. <laughs> now, sure, we've had to learn um, social media and new technology, but we are surprisingly adaptable, and our core skills of building teams and managing clients remain our greatest strengths. Perhaps that's why so many people over 50 have the confidence to become entrepreneurs. In 2017, a quarter of new businesses were started by people over 50. A study by the Census Bureau and MIT and Northwestern Universities found that the 50-year-old entrepreneur is nearly twice as likely as the 30-year-old one to become successful. Strong networks built over time, greater financial assets, and years of industry experience mean that some banks and venture capital firms may be more willing to finance us. And we can also borrow from our own retirement accounts. Four companies you may have heard of all had founders over 50. McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Home Depot, and the Huffington Post. So it's clear. We're bringing new jobs to the economy. But are there other benefits for young professionals? How about wisdom? I was a working mom, and I know firsthand that your job does not need to suffer when you become a parent. In fact, many employees become more productive and more efficient when they have kids because they're balancing two very important roles. A supportive work environment makes all the difference. So I gladly hire working parents, and I empower them with flexible schedules. How about mentorship? I'm sure most of us here can think of somebody older who had a positive impact on our career. 
65 major companies, including IBM and Morgan Stanley, are attracting more potential mentors to the workplace through programs like returnships, paid internships that often result in full-time jobs for mature talent. Carol Fishman Cohn, the pioneer of career reentry programs, explains that younger employees really benefit from the wealth of experience that returning professionals bring because we've been in business situations that they may be seeing for the very first time. And sure, she says, there are awkward situations like, how do I manage someone my dad's age? Or how do I report to someone 20 years younger than me? But training programs are designed to tackle these questions so that highly functioning, multi-generational teams can be built. Because let's face it, there is just so much iterating that any one generation can do with its own knowledge. New perspectives bring dynamic and often very necessary shifts. When I joined Vogue, it had been in print for a hundred years. Iconic editor-in-chief Anna Winter was brought in to take Vogue into the next century, and she disrupted not only the magazine, but the entire industry by putting a young model on the cover in a $10,000 couture sweater with a $60 pair of jeans. Youth culture was a growing fascination, and including the perspective of a younger consumer was a highly strategic move for that time. But today, the cultural disruption is happening in the other direction. Right now, the most compelling consumer is over 50. Consider this research from the marketing firm Immersion Active. 70% of all disposable income is controlled by people over 50. We are responsible for half of all spending in practically every product category, including cars and travel. In fact, in 2017, we bought 40% of all Apple products, spent $7 billion online, and our spending is anticipated to grow by 60% over the next two decades. And yet, only 10% of advertising is directed to this consumer. Savvy companies are catching on. Lancome Cosmetics just recently rehired model Isabella Rossellini, 25 years after retiring her. Three fashion companies use top models from my generation for their spring ad campaigns. Companies that tap into the power of this market with messages that speak to us will be sitting on a gold mine. Two years ago, I wondered, what, a, what does my future hold? Today, I've launched two digital brands fueled by the perspectives of multi-generational teams. The growing presence of the 50-plus demographic makes this a very exciting time for multiple generations to make a significant impact together. Thank you.